and we're going. My name is Brian Miller. I work for the University of Ottawa, um, and we use solar. Uh, who else here is interested? Well, I assume you're interested in solar. Uh, does anyone else actually use solar yet in live production? And are you university? Are you? Um, we're an agency. You're an agency. Different clients use them. So Different depending client. on the project, is uh, is when we actually implement it. Okay. Um, so this is a discussion about how the University of Ottawa decided uh, to go with its solar journey and what that meant to us and what opportunities that will avail to you uh, as adopting solar or whatever other search strategy you want. Uh, this is sort of a lessons learned and uh, there is a little bit of uh, code sharing that we've uh, been able to wrangle up for this uh, version of the presentation. So hopefully uh, that will help you out uh, in terms of incorporating it within uh, your Drupal uh, usage scenarios, uh, as well as uh, figuring out how solar works for you. Um, uh, with me today is my uh, colleague Prami from the university. Uh, he's the one that's done all of these wonderful graphics on the on the visuals, but uh, so as I was saying, the presentation is about uh, our journey uh, through the customized search solution um, and our choice of solar. Origins, so a number of years ago uh, in 2016, Google search used to be a very, very prominent factor in a lot of university and public sector areas. Uh, we used to buy these things called uh, the big yellow boxes. Basically, Google sent us a server, and it in itself contained all of the software, all of the server configuration to allow it to crawl all of your site independently and produce the same results as what Google would actually show in their internal search results. Uh, so a few years ago, they decided, we're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna go to a cloud-only solution that we're gonna to provide to all of our clients and you will pay for that cloud solution. Um, at, the point, at that point in time, we were running a number of very useful aspects of that Google search appliance. Uh, so one of the things that it doesn't allow you to do is focused keyword matching as well as focused um, collections. Uh, so for instance, in a university environment, we would be saying, uh, we want to be able to search only for the information and present only the information on uh, our Department of French, Department of Francais. And if that was the case, then we would have to actually create special collections within this Google search appliance that will allow us to do this. Uh, with the Google search tool uh, online, Typically you can do this, but it requires you to set specific parameters and stuff, and it's not the same configuration ease. Uh, so this is one of the things that really drove us towards looking at what options were available outside of the Google search engine um, infrastructure that would allow us to essentially create a tool that was useful for us as a university to promote our business needs. Okay. So lessons learned. Basically, we started our journey with solar with uh, two projects that we had previously. Uh, we have an internal search tool that uh, is used for our event calendar, and that uses sol solar. Uh, but then we also developed a internal employee directory. Uh, so with all of the universities, uh, typically all of the information is public knowledge. So we have to actually have a public sharing of all of the employees on the university in a searchable format. Uh, the old tool for this uh, was managed through uh, basically a DOS 32-bit interface uh, at the point in time that we were looking at, and we basically had to take that information and migrate it into a searchable format that would allow us to present it online. Um, and this was what we call our ECIS uh, employee directory, so employee uh, search directory. Um, we developed this um, with a very, very rudimentary understanding of solar at that point in time. This was sort of our first project that we looked at with solar uh, and it allowed us to take all that information, put it into a solar index, 
and then extract that out when you make a request. Uh, so we basically looked at this and said, how do we take this to the next level? How do we look at solar and look at it as solutions for tomorrow, for next year, for the future? Uh, so internally what we did is we said, let's take our guys, send some of our guys for training specifically with the solar experts in San Francisco uh, and find out what they have to tell us about what is available with solar. Uh, so we did that and actually uh, two of our guys went to Lucene uh, and were able to get some great hands-on training. Uh, Lucene also provides uh, direct vendor solutions in solar if you're looking for managing uh, a vendor to do this for you they will actually provide that service for you. Uh, we chose to go internally ourselves, but again, uh, depending on what your requirements are, you may want to go with a vendor-supported solution that uh, relieves you of that burden. Um, so when we were looking at this, we were looking at uh, the way that we actually use our website. So um, I've mentioned before to a few other people that we have 300 websites running on a Drupal CMS multi-site platform. Um, so from a perspective of searching individual sites, it wasn't really that feasible to have each of the Drupal API searches running and try and collate that. So what we did was we basically said, okay, we need something that will broadly crawl all of those sites and be able to return us with the results that we need that we can manipulate and that we can provide to our individual clients. Um, we also needed to be able to crawl external partner sites. So uh, as with any organization, sometimes you have your 300 sites that are core to your business, but then you also have a few outliers that like to run their individual special problems and special solutions to uh, their marketing needs. And we also wanted to include those within our overall uh, search requirements. Uh, and it needed to be scalable and future-proof. So we wanted to look at something that was uh, very, very relevant in the market at that point in time and that had a good roadmap in terms of future-proofing it for um, extending in the future, extending with future versions of Drupal, extending with future versions of whatever solution came up. Um, so we were looking at solar. So why did we pick solar? Solar has a very high amount of market share in the open source community for the uh, search options. Uh, its main competitor is uh, Elasticsearch, uh, which also actually recently um, AWS, Amazon Web Services, now also provides a solar option for their search uh, options. It's the Amazon Cloud Searches. And the reason why they did this was because when they were working with the Amazon Web Services Elasticsearch tools, uh, they were having some problems with the Elasticsearch uh, team and their uh, Elasticsearch team is going more towards a Oracle approach towards Elasticsearch. So you get the core Elasticsearch as open source, but if you want any of the extras, any of the bonuses, uh, they're now providing a private paid solution uh, that does not always come free with the Elasticsearch, whereas Solar, uh, it is open source as with uh, all of the Apache projects and um, it will remain so. Uh, so from our search of Solar, Elasticsearch, looking at that Google search appliance that we had previously used and what it morphed into uh, with the Google search engine, the cloud search engine, um, we determined that our best solution uh, from a market share perspective was to go with solar. Number two, regional usage. So this was kind of a toss up. We had looked at uh, a lot of the Canadian universities and again, this is data from uh, 2017. Uh, so two years old, uh, but approximately a lot of the universities that we've talked to uh, actually had not migrated beyond uh, the Google search online tool, uh, and many of them were looking at solutions. I know that uh, in speaking with uh, a few people here yesterday, uh, Waterloo is now gone with a elastic search model where they're purchased uh, and the vendor supports them. Uh, so they're 
where we said that uh, we have no Elasticsearch uh, instances, now there is one uh, that I'm aware of, but again, it was kind of not really a determining factor for us other than that a lot of the universities were on the tail end of adoption at that point in time, so whatever choice we made was sort of lead the pack. Uh, third one was the meeting of the business right. So, uh, in terms of what our business requirements identified for the University of Ottawa, a number of things that come into it is the usability, the ability to manipulate the results, and the ability to direct our audience to what we feel is the most relevant content for their requests. Um, when you're working with your Google search appliance, when you're working with the Google search cloud, you're basically under the auspices of Google's algorithms to define what they think is the best results for a specific individual. In some cases, that works wonderfully. In some cases, Google will return you with 40,000, 100,000 results that are not clearly defined. So what we as our communications and our marketing group wanted was to be able to say to ourselves, if we have a student that's coming to the university and they're looking for specific content, how can we drive them to that content most easily and through the most user, uh, the most easy user interface that we can provide for them. Um, another major factor for us, and I'm not sure how much of a factor it is for a lot of other people, but we are fully multilingual. So we're fully bilingual university. All of our results have to be in English and French at all times. Uh, so the University of Ottawa has a French first uh, mandate and essentially anything that we publish to the web has to be available in both official languages of the university. And we needed a search tool that allowed us to actually manipulate the results in both official languages and present them in a way that would be interpreted well by our end users. Uh, so this was also an option that uh, was given to us with this focused uh, customizable tool. Um, and then as I said, um, or uh, targeting the tailoring results, targeting or excluding specific content was also important to us. Uh, so again, these are a lot of the business needs. And again, um, Elasticsearch, Solar, a number of the, those other tools would allow you to do this. Uh, it's just a matter of how much effort you wanted to put into customization of that tool. So, we were ready to go. We had our guys trained. We had chosen our tool and we were able to look at releasing our solar system. So what does that look like? Um, for those of you that are familiar with solar, you have basically two options. You have the option to have solar as a single instance connected to your uh, Drupal website or to whatever infrastructure you connected with, or you can go with a solar cloud instance. Uh, so a solar cloud instance has multiple indexes, has multiple servers uh, called Zookeeper servers, which basically cover off redundancy and cover off your crawling information. Another aspect to this is uh, the Apache Nutch project. So Nutch in itself is a crawler, and all it is is a crawler. But basically what Nutch does is it creates that result set that you feed into Solar that will allow you to use the Solar indexes to basically target specific information. So without Nutch, Solar is basically just a data repository. Um, so, in our high available solar cloud configuration, we have our one solar nutch server, or our, our nutch server, which is constantly crawling our website, constantly crawling uh, the content that we create, and creating the data indexes on our two solar servers, and then we have our three Zookeeper servers, which are essentially the load balancing uh, data servers, which manage where the data goes and manage which uh, solar server we're actually returning the results from. Uh, okay, so what does this look like for us? So we have our main UOttawa do domain, our web servers. Uh, so these are Apache web servers on a redundant uh, to Apache server configuration, and this is 
contains 300 Drupal sites in a multi-site environment. And this is then queries our solar server, which basically takes all the data from the Nutch, crawl, as well as, uh, so similar to, I guess, what you would call an agar like type of uh, tool, we have a command line database uh, configuration tool which identifies all of those 300 multi-sites that we have in Drupal, and that basically feeds Notch and says, we want you to crawl this information. We can also tailor that specifically with extra XML, which indicates which other sites that we want that are not included within our Drupal site, and then Nutch will provide all of that information from the crawl into Solar, and then we have our public search that's available on our uauto.ca site. So yes, as I, as I was sort of saying about Nutch, it begins its crawl from the site list. Uh, it feeds that information into the Solar, uh, and then we have a custom Drupal module which queries Solar for those results. So from a Drupal perspective, uh, a lot of you may be wondering why we didn't go with the Drupal Solar Search module, uh, some of those. What we found was that it was very, very poorly uh, built for multi-site support, and uh, in terms of multiple searching of multiple indexes, uh, it wasn't where it should have been at the time that we were working on this project. Uh, since then, I do believe that the multi-search is better. You can actually reference uh, other solar uh, indexes from that module, uh, but at the point in time that we were actually working on this two years ago, uh, it was not the case. Okay, so we're going to go into a quick demo of our of what our search does. So this is the University of Ottawa search. Um, and essentially all of this is driven and controlled completely through a Drupal custom module that we built uh, on our side of things that's basically enabled us to access our solar results. Uh, I will provide some code snippet information about how that Drupal module does those query results uh, as well as uh, providing filters and stuff. So what you see here is basically a quick search for education and let's make it bigger. Um, so here we have our English and our French results. So this was something that we needed specifically from our business requirements that I had mentioned uh, because we basically wanted to make sure that if an individual was searching for something and they did not find it in the English results, realized that, oh wait, I need to see that in the French results. It was an easy switch between the two languages to determine whether or not the results are relevant to them. Um, now, the other thing that you may notice here is this uh, special bold area. Uh, so this is essentially our keyword matching. Yes? Is this a Drupal site? This is a Drupal site, yes. And uh, what do you use for front-end just to uh, present the result? Yeah. The theme. Uh, so basically this is a uh, a Zen variety uh, variant theme uh, with views and uh, templating uh, that basically receives that information uh, with some custom CSS coding. It's actually very straightforward and simple. Yeah. Um, and so part of this is uh, basically there's an XML file from the solar side of things that we basically say if an individual puts in something like education as a search result, can we basically say to them, the very, very first option that we give you is the Faculty of Education. So basically we can ta target specific words, specific phrases that a user will search for and give them basically promoted results for those terms. So this is all customized. You don't use uh, such a pages or any, any other models? No. It's custom theme. Yeah. So this is a custom theme, and yes, it is. It returns multiple results, and we paginate those results, and basically, it's a special <laughs> view specifically for the results that are coming from the solar server. 
So we have our multilingual stuff. We have our specific coding. We are also working on, um, and unfortunately I don't have the demo for it today, uh, but essentially what we've done uh, is we've duplicated Google's advanced search. So a lot of the uh, real language querying that you have in the search results, we can have search plus apply and it will actually return those results. So where you have apply to a specific with education as it comes in. Uh, I didn't turn off the lights. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's weird. Did, did apply get translated to application? Yes. So there are synonyms. Uh, so the other thing that you can do with solar is you create a, a number of synonyms, you create a number of uh, anthonyms, you create a number of equivalent aliases. Uh, so for instance, a number of individuals uh, like HR. And if they're searching for HR, they typically are searching for human resources. Well, how long is that list? It's, it, it's XML controlled and it's on the fly. So essentially what happens is if you want to change this or add something to it, we update the XML, we provide that XML to the solar server, the solar server immediately will respond and provide those results. So there's nothing on the Drupal side that's required in order to refresh or update those results. Okay, it's part of the multi language features of Silver. Yeah, yeah. Now what is this uh, yellow back, uh, background? So this, so this is also, again, HR is one of our keyword matches. So if they see HR in those results, it will automatically promote human resources over percent, percent, uh, potentially individual things like senior HR managers or whatever information is available. So this has been an ongoing process for us in terms of improvements, in terms of um, additional elements that we wanted to focus on. Uh, so another thing, uh, and we'll go back to my presentation now. Because we are almost to the point of Drupal meta tags and SEO. I'm gonna try and do you remember what light this was? There we go. Pretty good at it. Okay, so a lot of you may be wondering about how uh, we actually get Drupal to provide all of the proper information for the data set for solar. Uh, so we do this through meta tag information specifically on the Drupal side of things. Uh, basically your content is all created with uh, the basic information and we target specific elements within the content model to be shown in the header of the HTML pages that Solar and Nutch will then be able to use. So when Nutch is doing a crawl, it will look at the title of your page, it will look at the description that's given, plus it will look at any metadata that is actually provided extra to that. Uh, so one of the things that we've actually targeted specifically for that, and one of the things that I'm gonna share with you, is um, we were looking at publish date. So one of the most relevant issues that you have with search information is how relevant it is to today and how relevant it is to tomorrow. So basically you want, um, I can give you a good example of this, is currently one of our problems and what caused this was when we're looking for something like dates and deadlines, Oops. And if I spelled it right, yeah. Um, so other things come up, and you get 2011, 2012, 2016, 2017. You don't want those. Um, and this is another thing that we're deploying very, very shortly. Uh, oh, why did I go to that? So, 
we have basically gone in and figured out what Drupal hooks are necessary for uh, Drupal basic content elements as well as panels pages. Uh, and we basically looked at how to expose those as meta tags in HTML. Uh, so basically your head publish uh, date field is actually driven by the content update from your Drupal pages. So if you create a page in Drupal uh, with specifically today's date, it will actually show up in the publish field on the HTML and we then ingest that with our crawler, put it into solar, so uh, hopefully in the next month uh, we will be able to actually start showing publish date results for specific content and be able to say uh, in the instance of that dates and deadlines specifically, it will actually we'll be able to boost the one for this year over all of the other ones without actually having to do that targeted uh, specific keyword match. Uh, and so this code for how you do that with uh, both regular uh, content pages as well as for panel pages, uh, we're making available uh, through this GitHub link for our U Ottawa team that we've put together uh, to share with you. Um, it's fully commented in terms of what hooks and stuff were used to expose that information. Uh, and if you have any problems, if you have any concerns, questions about this, my team is more than happy to help uh, and give advice on this specific code. Uh, just drop us a line in the comments uh, or email us directly. Um, I'm not going to go through the entire code, but essentially it allows you, it's all of the hooks that are used for on publish of... This is Drupal 7, right? Sorry? This is Drupal 7, yes. So this is still Drupal 7. I'll discuss Drupal 8 and what the future is in a second, but uh, that is also part of my uh, presentation. But our current situation is with the Drupal 7, uh, and so this is Drupal 7 code. Okay. But uh, are you going to provide uh, people to decide if they want to have things uh, published uh, in the last week or something like that, or you will? Uh... Uh, so for our site, uh, basically we have, uh, in our multi-site environment, we have an authoring environment and we have our public um, prod environment. So the understanding is in our institution that anything that's put on the public prod server, it's published. Uh, as well, the uh, it would be very easy to double check, but that uh, publish node content stuff essentially also targets whether or not the content piece itself is actually in a published state. So the, the date only gets actually pushed when the content that you have provided is in a published state. So it's publicly available on the website. Okay? So basically our key takeaways from uh, this entire journey were that using what we knew, keeping it simple, not trying to reinvent so much as just reuse what common patterns were available. So uh, our search display and the tools that we sort of integrated into that are all basically just liberally copied from the way that Google handles common searches. We didn't try and reinvent the wheel. Uh, a lot of those elements uh, are available from the solar community. Uh, they basically say if you're looking to do this, this is the way you go about configuring solar to address this. Uh, it's all uh, very, very engaging in terms of the community information that's available for everything from being able to create those synonyms and those keyword matches to being able to even now integrate machine learning into your uh, search results. So making suggestions and having those suggested terms uh, based on that. Um, and all of this is because when we were looking at this tool, we were looking at it from a data first approach. Um, so the keynote this morning was actually really interesting from the point is that 
It's not necessarily our websites that are going to drive our content. It is going to be the data. And where do you host that data? Where do you provide that data? For us, a decision was made that we wanted to control it ourselves and that we wanted that data to be available in a format that we could extrapolate and use. And solar for us is that data source. Um, so from a perspective of the future, where we can go, um, we've just implemented facets. Uh, so in this code, we have both the, so another snippet that is provided uh, is what we're calling our solar search PHP. This is Drupal 7 PHP code that allows you to query solar for filters and for faceted search information. So when you're talking about facets, you're talking about uh, when you go to amazon.com and you're saying, I want to look at um, TVs and I want to look at 47 inch TVs that are uh, LCD, OLCD, that is a basically a filtered down faceted view of your information. You didn't save it on your site. No, it's, so again, I don't, <laughs> my team, we actually just finished the last sprint last week and we have to wait until our, um, our web update in June to push the header updates for the, um, for the Drupal sites. So by the end of June, I believe that, uh, when is our June web update? Mm -hmm. The third week? Yeah. yeah. Um, so after that, all of those published dates will then start appearing on the pages and then we'll be able to start filtering that and we'll actually expose. So right now the, um, the module that we have for that advanced search is essentially deactivated. In all of our Drupal custom modules, the way that we handle a uh, custom module is that we actually feature lock it with a config uh, checkbox, which basically says that we can push the code, but unless we actually click that checkbox, it doesn't actually show up on the public website. So we're in a point right now where that's where we're at, and unfortunately it's not publicly available. Uh, and I was hoping that it would be for this presentation, but uh, unfortunately not. Uh, but it is coming in the next uh, next few weeks. Does that help answer that question? Um, so this code that we provided is both the solar config XML, uh, and basically what this does is it defines a number of the variants and the fields that are shared in order to generate those facets. So from the university perspective, a facet might be uh, you want to target a specific faculty, you want to target a specific department, you want to target a specific program. And then we can filter through all of those levels. Uh, and that's what this will provide for us. Uh, and this will show up on our search results uh, in the right hand uh, once it's enabled. Uh, and then the code that basically does those filter and search requests and the hooks that you would use in a Drupal module to access those are in, this, uh, in these code snippets. Uh, so one of the reasons why uh, we're using code snippets and we didn't actually create a module is the University of Ottawa uses an API gateway to uh, securely encrypt all of our API data requests and that does not actually so there's other things in our modules that attribute directly to that API gateway that can't be shared. So these are the code snippets for what the module should have in it, but it's not the complete module. Okay. Um, yes. And so, as I was saying, future of this is uh, more subsite searching basically being able to create a specific search block on a Drupal site uh, and say um, for the faculty of education I only want to search the faculty education stuff and that will provide the default parameters back to the search engine to only target that specific site. So now with the tools that we have with faceting, 
with the advanced search elements, we are in a position where we do that. Uh, plus the AI machine learning stuff that's uh, coming in. Um, I'm not sure uh, when it'll be available, but uh, there have been a number of major advancements within the AWS marketplace as well as the Google marketplace to allow for, uh, as they were saying, plug and play usage of machine learning. Uh, there are tools now that will allow you to basically have a live transcription of a meeting while you're having it and have the notes actually live transcribed into a notepad uh, directly from just speaking. Uh, there are a number of other things. So uh, I had the good fortune of actually going to an AWS summit uh, where they highlighted that they now have Alexa actually speaks proper Quebec French. So if you, if you uh, switch your settings for Alexa to French and query it, it will actually properly respond uh, in the French that you expect rather than proper uh, France French. So, so the transcript shown in the search results or the actual video of the what? Well, as, as he was showing this morning, the AI stuff that Google, uh, so at the keynote he was showing that um, they're actually now doing AI investigation, deep diving of podcast text and other things like that. So uh, from the power dynamics and uh, Power BI stuff that Microsoft is showing with Azure uh, and with uh, the AWS stuff, they're basically just plugins that you basically can buy a third party plugin from AWS, from Microsoft, and essentially expose that through a scripting language, input in your data, and it will output out the results. So if your data input is a, an audio file, it will export out a text file of what was said. And that's all data. And so the advantage of Solar and the advantage of Elasticsearch and the advantage of these data repository elements are that they are the data that you are going to use to feed these machine learning algorithms. Right? So what we can do with the results that we have now, we find out who's using what and we say, okay, these are our most common terms, feed those into the AI, and eventually we'll be able to basically replace that keyword matching with, these are your top suggestions, rather than have to go through the whole element that Google goes through with refining their algorithm, these machine learning tools will actually be able to respond from our bias of what we want them to respond for. And the advantage of this in terms of the Drupal community is that as we move towards the API services in Drupal 8, it will become more and more easy for us to integrate that data into Drupal 8 and to integrate these elements of machine learning, of all of these other advancements. So thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. Um, for Drupal 8, are you planning to continue pushing the information maybe in meta tags, or are you going to go through the API? We're going to go towards using an API. So uh, the data first approach will create for that. So we're currently in a web transformation project towards Drupal 8 and the API service space from start to finish. And have you um, had a chance to look at that um, search? Federated Solar, Search API Federated Solar? We have not looked at that. It just came out? Yeah, I, I, I saw it, but I have not had a chance to dive into it yet. Thanks. So one of the upsides of uh, like Search API is that you can index uh, the deltas of the changes that happen on a fly. Yep. How does that handle now that you use Nudge? Can you do individual URLs? Are you doing the whole so, site? Nudge can be threaded. So we have, uh, so our Nutch server can actually run multiple threaded processes. Um, we basically can say, add these web pages to the Nutch crawler and spin off a separate thread that just does those. Well, the big 
daily one is churning through and looking at it. And basically, the Nutch server, the configuration, you can control how frequently you want it to search that information, how stale you want the information to get, and how uh, much of that information you want to retain. So um, you could essentially say, I want Nutch to make sure that every 15 days, it crawls the entire site. Uh, for us, we have a lot of pages, so we're actually on a 30-day cycle, uh, but essentially it also factors in all of those deltas of knowing when the content was done. Uh, and now that we have the published date, we will also be able to use that published date and feed that published date into the configuration for Nutch to say, if this published date is X, then we need you to crawl this information more frequently. So then, so it's not really real time then, it sounds like. Are you doing like on a node save, you're, you're then telling Nudge to go re-index that page, or is it a node saves, it can take at least 30 days before it's updated? Uh, well, no, so our solar ser our, our Nudge server is constantly crawling. So if it finds new information, and it takes probably about a day for it to find new pages and new information, um, but it's constantly in real time trying to update itself. So it's running through its list of URLs that it constantly is going through. We also have a separate process which, while it's not real time, we can basically sort of jumpstart that by saying, please spin off a separate Nutch instance to search these specific files. We have not done the connection between a Drupal module that basically says as soon as it's published, send it into a queue to spawn off this Nutch, but that's completely one of our overarching nice to have things that we would like to do. Yeah, it is one of the problems is like the current module that we have on Drupal. Uh, the issue was it only pushes according to the fields that we define mm -hmm. at sale, and uh, there are some stuff that we need more from the pages, right? And also third party external pages are not completely the other uh, or like we can't push that information so I think we just need that. So we need to put everything in one search index. Yeah, like mainly because we can't uh, manage what information goes from because not all the sites, only our that specific uh, site installation would have those fields. Like some other site that uses uh, WordPress, they only expose those uh, fields to be pushed to the they, re yeah. they require a separate Nutch configuration for each of those specific things. Um, so the advantage from a university perspective that we have is that all of our sites are on a common look and feel. A common look and feel. <laughs> and so the fields that we use are very consistent between site to site. Um, so for our 300 Drupal sites, we basically have one configuration in Nudge that says on a Drupal page, this is what you're looking for, this is what we're providing in terms of the fields that are going to solar. Those fields need to be public. And they need to be public, yes. Well, you, you, you can have some private fields say, I want this to be higher priority. Uh, well, no, so the way, that, the way that it works is that after you collect those fields, then you have boosting within the solar configuration that says, I want to weight this field higher than this other field. So when, for instance, when we have the publish date, we're gonna boost that in terms of the viability of that search result versus the other elements. So it's gonna be more important to us than say uh, that you've actually have education seven times in the content body of that uh, element. Does that help, sort of? No. Yes. Uh, so how do you manage synonyms? Like you said, HR is actually searching for human resource. Yes. And uh, let's say tomorrow there is a requirement if you search for resource, it should give you the result for human resource. So do you actually go on the solar side, update the synonym.txt to add the new synonym and make it work, or do you have <coughs> an automated way to make it work from the web to, to Synonym. So again, that's another one that uh, my lead developer wanted to add in, where basically we could go from the Drupal side and have it populate that Synonym text file. Yes. However, currently our solution is that we have a uh, Git repository. So in the XML for that, we, for the Synonyms, we basically update that 
and then we have a uh, direct runner which basically updates the solar configuration every single time that we update our Git repository. And that's the way that we handle that. We're not handling it directly through Drupal, it's but that a, is... It's a Git runner, and whenever there's a commit, you update the uh, file on the yeah. So you have the whole solar server and the web server on the, on the same server? Um, it does it. Oh, well. No, there's a and, and it's independent. So all, so the Drupal side of things is independent and doesn't require anything to be updated from uh, the Drupal side of things for it to basically say, I have new information. It's the solar side that controls that. So Drupal basically is completely agnostic of the, that information. Okay. And uh, for your site-specific search, Yes. Um, which I, I we do have half worked out yet, it looks like. Um, it's basically planning to just do a boost. So if, if somebody is searching from a certain subsite and you want results really targeted to just that site. So what we've done in our Drupal side of things is uh, we've identified every single one of our multi sites with a unique identifier. Mm -hmm. And so we can actually target that with a mapping uh, tool that we have and basically say in our solar search results, that's a field. So uh, as I was saying before, Department of Communication, you actually have a specific Department of Communication identifier associated with all of the links that were crawled by Nutch. Yeah. So we'll be able to leverage that with our facets yeah. and our uh, filters. Right. Oh, yes, yeah. so as a facet, it'll be Thank you very much. Uh, enjoy.